Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Galaxy Dice EX. This is a brand new game by Rampage Games. It is a 1-4 to four player game that takes roughly half an hour to 45 minutes to play, and is a competitive game, so each player will be competing against the other players to have the most victory points and be the overall winner at the end of the game. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to play, starting with the components, then setup, player turns, and in-game conditions. I'm also going to be covering the seven different mini additional modes that you can add into the game, choosing which ones you want to add in after you have the base game down. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to my channel, as it really does make a big difference. It helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. If you will stay updated on all my videos, also consider hitting the ring that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. There are two different sets of six-sided dice included in the game. The first set are the black ship dice, and you'll have one side with an explosion, a one-up, and the four different weapons, which are plasma, missiles, spray, and waves. Then there's going to be a set of boss dice included as well. Four sides are going to have one of each of the weapons on them, with the times two, which will count as two of that type of weapon. One side will be wild, which you can count as any weapon type and then one side will have an explosion. These are a little bit more risky, as you'll notice there is no side with a one up. Each time you defeat a boss, you'll get to add one boss die. There's also two different decks of cards included in the base game. The first deck is the stage select, and this is going to have the four different stages players are gonna be working their way through throughout the game. The mech planet, desert planet, ocean planet, and volcano planet. Each of these is going to have a number of victory points in the upper left hand corner, and at the bottom of the card is the sequence in symbols that the player must roll on the dice in order to complete this stage. The other deck of cards are the bosses, and there will be one for each of the stages, Volcano, Ocean, Desert, and Mech. Each of these will provide a sequence the player must roll to defeat that boss and add them to their stack. And each boss will be worth 700 victory points at the end of the game. Moving into setup, this is just going to cover the base game. If you want to know how to add some of the mods, I'll include that later in the video. So from there, you're going to go ahead and grab the stage select deck and shuffle that up, and then place it out in the middle of the playing area. And then you'll reveal the first four cards in that deck. Once you're done with that, grab the four boss decks and separate them by type. Then, based on the number of players, take that number of bosses from each of them. So I'm going to set up for three players, so I'll remove one boss card from each one of the decks. And it doesn't matter how you place these above the stage cards. They don't have to be attached to their stages or anything like that, as those are going to shift. Any boss cards you don't need will be returned to the game box. From there, then deal each player a quick reference card. Each player will receive three tokens to start the game with. Any remaining tokens can be set out in the playing area for the players. You'll also place out the two boss dice by the bosses. And finally, you'll choose one player to be the starting player, and that player will receive the seven black ship dice to start the game. And my player here will be the starting player. From here, we're ready to move into the game. Galaxy Dice has played over an undefined number of rounds. During each round, each player will get to take a turn, starting with the first player and proceeding clockwise around the table. During each player's turn, that player can choose to tackle a stage or rush a boss. And this is going to continue until one player is able to defeat three bosses. At that point, the end of the game will be triggered, and the remaining players will each get to take one last turn. And then the, the game will move into a scoring step where the players will score up all their points, and the player with the most points will be the overall winner of the game. At the beginning of a player's turn, that player will gather up the seven black ship dice, and then if that player has defeated a boss previously, the player will exchange one black ship die with one blue boss die. If the player has defeated two bosses previously, the player will exchange two black ship dice with two blue boss dice. And the player is always going to roll seven dice total. From there, the player is going to select one of two different options. The player can choose to tackle one of the stages that's currently out there, or the player can rush a boss. A player can only choose to rush a boss if they've completed at least one stage of that boss's level. And I'm going to take you through each one of these options in more detail. The first option a player has is to tackle a stage, and the player does not have to nominate the stages they wish to tackle when selecting this option. From there, the player is going to gather up the dice and roll them. Any explosions the player rolls are going to be set off to the side and are locked. Now, any one-ups the player has will unlock one explosion per one-up the player has. And if the player ever has three explosions and no one-ups, the player's turn immediately ends and the player will gather up two tokens as a consolation prize. 
From there, the player can choose to lock any other dice that they want to, and they can reroll these dice even later on during their turn. So let's say that our player locks a plasma and a set of waves, and then he'll go ahead and reroll these. The player can reroll these dice two more times. So here's our second time. We have another one up, so we can unlock that explosion. And we have some missiles and another plasma so we could go after this stage and at this point the player can end his turn as he doesn't necessarily need to roll again and risk getting those three explosions so the player is going to gather up this stage placing it his in his area and then revealing a new stage from the deck from there his turn is over and the dice will be passed to the next player in clockwise order to take their turn the other option a player has is to rush a boss, and a player can only choose this option if the player completed at least one stage in that boss's level. Each stage the player completes in that boss's level will let them roll the dice one time. So with the player down here, he's completed one stage in the mech planet, which means that going against the mech boss, he can only roll the dice one time. But if he had three stages completed in the mech planet, he could roll the dice three times trying to complete the sequence on that boss. If the player is able to do it, then he will place a boss card on his area over those cards of that stage. And from this point on, the player cannot choose to, sta to tackle any more stages in that boss's level. So if I complete the mech boss, I cannot choose to tackle any mech planet stages for the rest of the game. And this goes true for any boss that a player completes. Arcade tokens are a very important part of the game, and each player is going to start with three of these. During a player's turn, that player can spend his arcade tokens to do a number of rule-breaking abilities. The player can spend one arcade token to add an explosion back into his hand, allowing him to reroll it during his next reroll. A player can spend one token to cycle the stage cards, removing the four current stage cards and adding four new stage cards to the playing area. The player can also spend a token to add an additional reroll when trying to tackle a stage. And when rushing a boss, a player can spend two arcade tokens to give them one additional reroll against that boss. And players will be able to gain arcade tokens in a couple of different ways. If a player's turn ends in a game over where they have three explosions come up, or if the player is unable to gain a stage or defeat a boss, the player will gain two arcade tokens at the end of their turn. Now that I've gone through all the different steps of a player's turn, let me put it all together and show you another example of this. So my, now that my player's turn is done over here, I'm going to go ahead and pass the dice to the next player in clockwise order to begin their turn. So that player will start off. He hasn't defeated any bosses yet, so he has a seven dice. And so he's going to go ahead and tackle one of the stages. So he'll go ahead and start off by rolling. Wow, that's a lot of one-ups, but he had no explosions, so he's okay there. He's going to go ahead and lock a spray and a plasma. And then he'll roll again for his second roll. He has one explosion, so that'll go off to the side. And we have a wave, so he'll lock that. And he's going to go ahead and stop there, and he's going to spend the wave and the plasma to get the ocean planet. So that'll go hit to his area, and we'll reveal a new one. And then the dice will be passed to the next player in clockwise order. So our player over here will start off. Again, he's going to select to tackle a stage and go ahead and roll. So we have one explosion and a one-up, so that'll be able to bring that back in and he has the two symbols that he wants to get this stage he's going to pass them over and my player here will start his turn and i have an explosion and a one up and i have a plasma and i'll go ahead and roll these again i have a ship but no explosions and i still don't have the missiles that i was looking for yet I'm going to go ahead and lock these two just in case and then roll these again hoping for that missile. And I got it. So I got the two that I needed. So my player will collect this. Passing it to my next player to go. That player. Let's go ahead and try a boss with that player. So he's going to go ahead and roll against this ocean boss here. And he has three explosions and we have no ships. So that player's turn ends immediately. And so he is going to collect two tokens and he'll pass it to the next player. Now again, this is going to continue going from player to player until one of the players is able to defeat three bosses. 
At that point, that will trigger the end of the game. And then each other player will get one final turn. From there, then the players will move into a scoring step where each player is going to total up all of the victory points on all of their cards that they have collected. And the player that has the most victory points will be the overall winner of the game. Once you've played through the base game a couple times, you can choose to add some additional modes to the game. And there are seven additional little add-on modes that are included in the game. And you can add some of these, all of these, just one of them. It's totally up to you as the player how you want to customize your game. So the first one I'm going to look at is the bonus stage mode. And with this one, this is going to come with 10 bonus stage cards that you will shuffle in with your stage deck during setup. From there, then each time a bonus stage comes out, so let's say our player completed this stage here, and we drew a new stage, and this bonus stage came out, you'll place that off to the side and continue so that you always have four stages out there. Each time a bonus stage comes out and there's already stages, it simply stacks on top of the previous one. Then during a player's turn, they have to be able to claim a stage first, and then if they have any remaining dice, they can use it to claim a bonus stage. So let's say, for example, that my player rolled and he had enough for this Volcano Planet card here, and then he was also able to roll the bonus for this. So he will get to claim both of these cards. Now again, a player must claim a stage card in order to claim a bonus stage card. So you cannot choose to claim a bonus stage if you cannot claim a stage card. And you can only claim bonus stages for tackling a stage. You cannot use, you cannot rush a boss with those. And the one other important thing is with the boss dice, you can only use them on one stage. So you cannot split the results between the two different stages, the regular stage and a bonus stage. Once a player claims that, they're going to add it to their area, and they'll get the 200 victory points at the end of the game. And then the player will also get to roll the seven black ship dice three times. Each time they roll them, each one-up that they roll will get them one token that they can add to their area. And so I've gotten three and one more roll. And I picked up one more. So in this situation, my player gained four tokens for this. So as you can see, bonus stages can be really helpful depending upon how well you roll. In order to add the power capsule deck to your game, you'll go ahead and shuffle it up during setup and place it out next to the bosses. From there, each time a player has a game over, so let's say, for example, the player down here rolled his three explosions with no one-ups. At that point, then he would gain his two arcade tokens and he gets to draw the top card of the capsule deck, revealing that card. And keeping it face up and then for the rest of the game the player during his turn can use this ability and discard the card or he can hold on to it and get the victory points that are listed on the top of the card in order to add the glitch system cards to your game you'll go ahead and shuffle up that deck during setup and place it out next to the stage select deck and then you'll reveal the top card of that deck from this point on, a player during their turn can choose to go after a glitch card instead of going after a stage or run, rushing a boss. In order to do that, you'll have to achieve what is listed on the card. So for this particular one, we would have to have five one-ups. And if we can get this during our turn, then we'll claim that card and add it to our area. Now for the rest of the game, this card will provide this player with a benefit that's listed on the bottom of the card and it's going to be worth victory points. The one other important note with this is that players can steal these cards. So a player that achieves the goal again, rolling five one-ups, can take this card from another player, or they can go after a new one, as each time a card is claimed, a new one will be flipped over, so the players will have more options on what to go after. Again, you can claim a glitch, but you cannot claim it with another card. Dark Energy Mode is going to add some difficulty to your game, so only add this if you were looking for that. In order to use this mode, you're going to go ahead and shuffle up the six Dark Energy cards, and then the very top card is going to be flipped over to the Dark Energy side, and then the bottom card is going to be added for the Effect Matrix. And this will create a central image. From there, then the remaining cards will be added back to the game box and will not be used for this game. From there, during the beginning of each round, the first player is going to roll a black ship die, and then based on the symbol that's rolled, he'll place the glass marble on there, and for the rest of that round, that effect is going to be in play. And each one of these effects is going to be different and is going to add some sort of hindrance and potentially benefit to the players, but depending upon what it comes up as. The one other thing I want to point out is with the toxic effect. So when that comes up, you'll fail and have a game over effect when two explosions come up versus three. 
Ace Pilot mode is going to give players another opportunity to gain victory points in the end of the game, and is also going to give players a special ability throughout the game that they can use. In order to include Ace Pilot mode in your game, during setup, the very first player will start off by rolling a die, and if he gets one of the weapon symbols, he will gain that Ace Pilot. If he rolls an explosion or a 1-up, then he will pass the die to the next player to try to do this. And this is going to continue until all players have an Ace Pilot. From there then, during the game, when a player takes his turn, the player can choose to charge up his Ace Pilot instead of going after a stage. In order to do this, let's say that our player has the Spray Ace Pilot, then he's going to roll the dice as normal, trying to get Spray Symbols. And after his third roll, based on the number of spray symbols that player has, so let's say that our player was able to get three sprays, then he would gain a token for each one of those that he'd place on his area. Now this is not cumulative, so if our player chooses to try to charge up again, and he only rolls three sprays again, or two sprays, let's say, then he's not going to add that to the sprays that he already ha or the tokens he already has. He has to beat that amount, so our player would need to roll four or more sprays in order to increase his total tokens. Once the player has tokens on there during the game, the player can spend those tokens to add spray symbols to levels that he's trying to complete. A player cannot do this with the boss. The one exception to this is if a player chooses to go after a boss and the player fails to do that, he can use his symbols to charge up his pilot instead. So let's say we were going after a boss and our player only rolled two sprays. Instead of when he failed the boss attempt, he could add the two sprays to his ace pilot instead. Then at the end of the game, each token that a player has is going to be worth 100 victory points. Nemesis mode is going to add another challenge to the players and is also going to give them an opportunity to gain more tokens. So with the Nemesis mode, you're going to add the four Nemesis cards to the stage select deck during setup and shuffle it up. If one of these cards comes out as the initial four cards, then go ahead and shuffle it back into the stage select deck. From that point on, when a new card comes out, if it is a Nemesis card, then you'll add six tokens to that card. And then players from that point on cannot complete any more stages until the Nemesis is defeated. In order to defeat it, the player must roll symbols on the dice that match the Nemesis type. So with this one, we would need plasma symbols to come up. And each plasma symbol a player rolls will take one token away from the Nemesis and give it to that player. If you're using the power capsule mode as well, then you can purchase power capsules when a Nemesis is out for five tokens. And when the last token is claimed, so if our player defeated the nemesis and the last token was claimed, this nemesis will go to that player and will be worth 200 victory points at the end of the game. And the final mode is the nemesis soul mode. In order to add this mode to your game, again, you'll count on a number of these cards based on the number of players and then place them to the right of the boss's decks. After a player has completed at least one boss, they can challenge the nemesis soul during their turn. And this works just like rushing a boss. You'll choose him. For each boss that you've completed, it'll let you roll the dice one time, and you are not allowed to use tokens for rerolls within this, so you must be able to defeat it with that. Each boss that you defeat will give you one reroll attempt, so if you've defeated two, you'll get two rolls against the Nemesis Soul, and when a player defeats the Nemesis Soul, that will trigger the end of the game. And the player that defeats it will gain one of the cards, and these will be worth 900 victory points towards the player when scoring. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel, as it really does make a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.